here we are now in 2020. It's gone from 2011. Drinkle, drinkle, Pitchford, Pitchford, Pitchford. Drinkle, drinkle, Pitchford, Pitchford. Is it anybody's? Is Paul at 30 years old slowing down at all? I don't really think so, Don. Uh, but both of these players have been tested on the way here. Um, Pitchford has lost, a, dropped a couple of games against uh, Ethan Walsh on the way here. Brilliant performance from young Ethan. Junior player, so like Mari, providing a, a young challenge to the top, top players. Great rally to start with. And also Paul was given a scare by up and coming under 21 English champion Luke Saville. And uh, Paul had to go to the th seventh and final game to get through against Luke Saville. So I don't think this is going to be an easy match for either of them. I do think Paul's got a chance. I agree with you. You have to say the favourite, though, is Liam Pitchford because of his such a high world ranking. That's beautiful, Don. It's a very strong backhand topspin. Took it ever so early. Whipped it on the diagonal. Oh, the ball girl just... Fumbling the ball in the corner. It's the ball. The boys and girls have been amazing here as well. They come running in at the back of the court when the ball hits the barrier. And meanwhile, the umpire throws the ball to the player so we can keep the play more continuous. No delays as they... But again, that needs to be well coordinated, and it has been. Well done, the ball boys and ball girls. Two points apiece, Trinkle. Keeping level. And there's that famous behind-the-back shot that featured very prominently on breakfast TV. But, uh, so yes. I got up for my morning cup of coffee, yep. and there was Liam Pitchford doing backhands behind his back um, against Harry Moto, I think. It was one of the top players. Yep. Fantastic when it worked. I have to say, Don, I'm not sure it's a winning tactic. <laughs> it might get you out of trouble once when you've completely gone the wrong way. So, both players happy to open up with their backhand. Not too much running around to get the forehand in from the backhand side, but that'll come. And we'll see the tactics evolve throughout the match, I've got no doubt. So Liam happy to stand on the backhand mainly. Forehand from the crossover as well. But Liam's so quick, so explosive. It's very difficult for Paul to get Liam out of position because he's so quick and his recovery is so fast. Oh. The other factor that I think comes into play from a psychological point of view is that when you're expected to win, when you're the higher ranked player, the pressures are different when you are the number two player in a contest, when you are not expected to win. But you know at the back of your mind you're in oh. there with a good, a good chance if you play well. Mm -hmm. It's a nice situation to be in. You're the underdog, but you know you're in there. Different pressures for the top player who's expected to win. Of course, Liam Pitchford is very experienced now at that. He's been at the top for a significant period of time, copes with the pressure incredibly well. But nevertheless, for Paul, people will be talking like we're talking, that Liam's the slight favourite, and but Paul can do it. It's quite a nice psychological situation to be in. You can relax, you can go for your shots. Yeah, and Paul's so accomplished. I mean, Liam's got, between mixed and men's doubles as well as men's singles, uh, Liam's got 13 national gold titles to his name. But Paul Drinkle has 22. Other than Desmond Douglas, he's the highest ever title winner at the national championships. You have to say, though, and I totally accept those points, that the men's singles is almost a blue ribbon event. And Paul is part of an elite group of three players who've won it six times. Six times, yeah. Alan Cook, Dennis Neal and Paul with Desmond Douglas way out there with 11 victories. Joy! So Paul will be looking to pull away from the Alan Cooks and the Dennis Neals if he can to be second yeah. on in his own right. Whereas Liam has got six, five victories. Yep. And right. he'll be looking to join that exclusive That's right. club. That's right. So if, if he wants that, uh, that kind of lifetime achievement Joy! award... Liam really needs to win this one because otherwise uh, Paul will be too ahead of him. And every year that goes by, there's always a risk he might not win them all in future. So there we go. Three game points. Paul Drinkle. Well, Paul's not necessarily played all the big shots, but he's played very tight without making mistakes. And that's given him game points. Oh, what a backhand from Paul. He nearly got out of trouble there. 
Tom Jarvis's parents and family. Tom went out in the semi-final to Paul. Four games to one. Jarvis actually won the first game, but Paul did a great job, Don, of turning uh, young Tom Jarvis around, the young pretender. Tom Jarvis seeded four for the championship, meeting his seeding position. Couldn't quite beat Paul. Uh, and first game, Paul Drinkle. Well, what you said, Don, has pretty much come to pass. You know, he's, he had a chance, and in the middle, set, middle of the game, and then after the middle of the game, you just saw a very, very tight and consistent Paul Drinkle. A couple of little mistakes from, from Liam as he played the bigger shots, and that was enough to put Paul's nose in front, and was kind of the way that Paul's managed to, to come back in difficult matches before, like beating Luke Saville 4-3 earlier in the championship. I think watching, I think Paul Saville played outstanding table tennis and played at a level I've not seen him play before, so full marks to Paul. But I do think Paul Drinkle there won the first game 11-2 and then coasted in the second game. Luke Saville then jumped on the opportunity and played a wonderful game thereafter, but Paul took the pressure off yeah. and allowed him back into it, not discrediting Paul Saville at all because he played superb and he could have won. He could have won the seventh game. Right. It was that tight. Yeah. But I think here, it's psychologically, it's different. Paul knows he can't take it easier. He can't drop away from the table and top spin and, and play soft balls. And he's certainly totally focused here, as you would as you would expect. It's the national championship. It's the men's singles final. Yeah. Well, Paul's defending his lifetime record here. He wants to keep two ahead of uh, Liam in terms of men's singles championship wins. And that will give Liam a mountain to climb to overtake that record. But that backhand early, Liam's the one that's known for this, Don, but Paul's actually outstripping him with that first backhand across court. And the interesting thing is Paul's playing it so well off the bounce. It's close to the table. So do you think Paul's playing as well as ever, Don? Well, I, I said that before before the semi-final. That, um, I mean, I've watched Paul for 14 years now. I've watched him win the European Youth Championships. I've watched him win, yeah. you know, world events. He won the Spanish Open 2014. Um, and he's capable of amazing table tennis. But I do think at 30 years of age, he's playing as well as I've seen him play. He's, yeah. he's as fit as I've seen him. He's been working out hard in the gym. It's pretty clear on the road, wherever he's doing his workouts. He's looking fit. He's looking highly motivated. And of course, that's the benefit of having good players, world-class players around you. They're pushing you all the time. Just Great rally. Beautiful from both players. Fantastic table tennis yeah. by both players. It's world class. It's world class. And you mentioned the Tom Jarvis match. Well, Tom Jarvis is a great player. Yeah. And to have him pushing the, the older players is a very healthy situation for Team England. Lovely short return from Paul. Yeah. And the heavy, slow topspin to the backhand. That's one of Paul's trademarks, isn't it? To actually stop the, uh, the forehand topspin from going across the diagonal and just slow it down and go down the line when they're leaning the wrong way. Not always using the power. Using his smarts as well. So experienced and such a warrior. With great touch and power. Oh! What a response there from Liam Pitchford. Quick on his feet. Round the backhand to play that forehand. There he goes. Nice short serve from Paul, but Liam's in again. That one didn't creep over the net, so point to Liam. So just uh, if you just tuned in, it's best of seven games in this, the final of the Senior National England Championships. First to 11 wins a game. First to win four games wins the match and the title. Joe Drinkle there. Come on, Paul. But Paul there with the backhand there. That backhand. And he comes again with the backhand. There it is. Just soaking up the speed and spin from Liam Pitchford. 
Yeah, controlling it and using the wrist just to give it back with a little bit of interest so that the ball hits the other side of the table and just kicks on away from the table. So Liam knows he's under a decent threat here. Two yeah. big points, two big serves coming up for Paul Drinkle. Yeah, two on his serve would be nice. And that was a lovely serve. It was lovely because the second bounce was going to be on the baseline. And Liam wasn't sure whether he could play away from the table or play over the table. Slightly hesitated. Yep. And again, same sort of serve as Liam this side. Decided to push, he pushed it slightly long, allowed Paul to get in with the topspin. So two out of two on the Drinkle service, 9-5 now. Oh, it's a great response from Liam. It's a good return from Paul, but Liam relaxed on the backhand there. Good backhand down the line from Liam, and then forehand down the line. And that's what he tends to do when he gets the opponent away from the table, swings it wide of the backhand and going away into the barriers. So both players, the last few points, have dominated behind the service, the service being crucial. And now Paul Drinkle has his two serves to come. He definitely needs one point. And from his point of view, he needs two. Uh, oh, did oh. yeah. that go under the net? I'm not sure. I think it... No, he managed to lift shot. it while he was falling over, Don. And it had to be a winner, so he gave it a little bit extra. And indeed, I think Liam's eye was probably taken off the ball by the fall of Liam. So if it had come back, then uh, if it had come back, then Paul would have been left laying on the floor. But uh, Paul took the point. Oh! Three game points, and he yeah. wins it at the first opportunity, taking the second game, 11 points to seven. And Paul Drinkle now leads by two games to nil. Against the form book, one would say, but as we said at the beginning, Colin, well, this is going to be close. Everyone's form book except yours, Don. Well, no, no, I just pointed out that I think the pressures are slightly different. Paul's not expected to win, and therefore I think mentally that helps him a little bit with the pressure situation. Liam, of course, you know, ranked so high in the world, doing so well, semi-final of the Hungarian Open you know, last week, a major international Open. There is Liam in the semi-final with a good chance to win it actually, but nevertheless, semi-final, wonderful performance. So he comes here, and if anything, pressure's on him, which is tough. Yeah, it is tough. The risk for, for Paul now, of course, is that Liam says, well, if I, if I do play a little bit defensively or, or, or tighten up a little bit, I'm gonna lose anyway. So at two games down, Liam can relax and just come out fighting. And that one did go around the net, Dom. You're absolutely right, it didn't go over the net, it went round the net. And that's what made it so hard for Liam to block. So, will Liam relax? There will and be speed twists up? and turns to come. <laughs> Sit back, relax, and enjoy it. I'm not sure, I'm not sure people will necessarily relax, Don, but um, very exciting stuff. At least, at least we're not under the pressure that they are. Paul Drinkle, 30 years old, playing as well as ever. Six men's singles titles, 22 national titles overall. But Liam, the reigning champion. So two great fighters. Of course, when they play team event, Don, they're, uh, they're great friends. They train really, really well together. And they've had some fabulous international results as a team. They certainly have. I was with commentating actually at the World Team Championships in Kuala Lumpur when they won a bronze medal. Some amazing wins, beating Germany, Sweden, and very close against Japan in the semi-final when they lost. Very close. And then I was privileged to be at the Copper Box well, when they won a ago, bronze medal. Well, two team years ago, World Team Cup. Correct. And then two years later, then last That's year, another they, bronze. Got, they got a fifth place in the World Team Cup in, in Tokyo. So, you know, few, few could argue that we're not one of the top six teams in the world at this point in time, with those, on the back of those on results. On those results, yeah. And so a very, very strong unit together. But now their job is to break each other down and see who can be the last standing. 
I think what the, the two lads playing wouldn't mind me saying is that, you know, having watched those games, that Sam Walker played a very strong role as well. Well, yeah. The <laughs> they have done it on their own, haven't they? No. And, it, you know, in, in Malaysia, at, in the World Championships, you know, we were down struggling against Germany. Sam came on the table, won a crucial game, won a crucial game against Japan in the semi final that gave us a lifeline. And we almost took that lifeline and got through. So Sam Walker's played a big role as well, it has to be said. Yeah. And Sam, of course, losing semi-finalist this morning against Liam. Sam took the first game, actually, against Liam, 11-4. Just goes to show the class that, uh, that we have and that he Five, has. Four. But overall, Liam won four games to one. The last two were 11-9, 11-8. So Sam Walker's uh, certainly beaten Pitchford before, but not today. And Sam Walker's still looking for his first national men's title. Meantime, these guys have been dominating, and you can see why. Oh, Tintin and Kelly Sibley there watching. Multi-women's multi champion Kelly. And again, the winner of the women's this year, Tintin Ho, after Maria Sapsinos won it last year. So the women's just completed, and they're enjoying watching the men's final. The last of our matches today, this one. Liam there going for the long, fast push. Just overcooked it there, pushed it a little bit too long, but looking to be positive. It's the, it's the right tactic, but uh, just didn't quite come off. But still Pitchford with a one-point lead. Short serve, short return again. That time the long push worked for Liam, but he picked it up easily. But he was assisted by that net cord there, was Paul. It yeah. just caught the top of the net. It affects the trajectory of the ball and Liam had no chance there. So Liam, very unfortunate. Good return of serve. But Paul deserves the credit in the sense that he played that backhand yeah, top he played spin. the right shot and he played it pretty well. Oh, Liam just opened up, sent, sent ball the wrong way, diving towards the forehand, then changed it into the backhand. Again, the net getting in the way. Good flick. Seven Deep into the Drinkle backhand, seven points apiece. So, Paul Drinkle now with his two serves. In the pressure situations, he served well and got in well. Let's see if he can do it at seven all in this third game. Get over. Seven, Short play, Liam's first in, but not with a big one, but followed up with a big one, certainly. That short play was superb, controlled by both players, and then Liam Pitchford unleashes, unleashes that monster forehand topspin. Great play. Paul doing well there, just to make the backhand look difficult for Liam. Kept the, kept the backhand push just a little bit shorter. Big point for Pitchford. He needs this one. Oh. Yeah, his last serve Eight. before Paul's serve. Two game points now for Liam Pitchford. Paul Drinkle with his serves. Needs these two, obviously. Harry Juttle in the chair. Officiating. Two game points to Liam Pitchford. Can he get a game on the board? Eight, ten. Pulls in first, not with a big one, but enough to keep him in the game. Nine, ten, and serving. Short serve, order of the day, I feel. And then in with a topspin if he can. Yep, short to the forehand, oh, forehand, oh, forehand across. But the return was excellent return from lovely, Pitchford. Yep. Good touch, kept it tight, and Pitchford wins the second game, 11-9. Two points, or better still, two games to one as the players go back to their respective corners. <laughs> Liam takes that game, doesn't look too happy though. So 
Uh, John Davis in the corner. A couple of highlights. A lot of touch to touch. Who's in first? They're certainly not scared of each other's loops if they're coming from low. <laughs> Great cat and mouse play there. Daring the other person to try the to top spin. If they don't get a strong one in, they can counter it. Who's in there? So Paul getting in fast. You can see from the side, the camera that's on the side of the table, Don, just how fast the play is. They're sometimes playing three balls a second between them. So confirmation of the situation there in the final. We predicted this would be a thriller, and a thriller it is. Paul Drinkle takes the first two games. We predicted twists and turns. And that's exactly what we're getting. What will be the next turn? Will Paul Drinkle get off to a good start? Notch up a 3-1 lead, or are we heading to two games apiece? The next five minutes will tell that story. Short play again to start. I mean, really, Paul isn't putting much variation into his uh, the direction and speed of his serve. He's changing the spin, Don, but a lot of serve short to Liam's forehand. I do think now with the players, it's interesting your opinion, Colin, that the emphasis is on deception, making your opponent think there's more backspin or less backspin than there actually is. And if the ball just pops up a fraction, yep. of course, the players can get in. I do agree, if you change the direction, you keep your opponent on the toes. But I do think possibly now the emphasis is on more on deception of spin. Well, I, I agree. And uh, all they need is an extra ball height, don't they? You know, if the ball's just a, a ball height higher, they can get in with a stronger, a stronger shot, and that'll be enough to get in a, in a pressure flick or something. But I have seen a few scatter diagrams of where players are serving to at um, elite level, and quite often against a certain opponent, they'll put the ball very, very into a very, very tight area with hardly any variations of uh, of uh, direction and speed if they're playing someone who's genuinely world class, as Liam is. Without that. Paul was giving it much more variation in the earlier rounds, but against Liam, he can't afford to do just say, well, mix it up and do a long serve and have Liam just smash it past him. So a lot of thought goes into what serve to do, a mixture of defence and attack in the thinking about the serve. And that one worked beautifully. A float serve, not as much backspin as it looked. Liam popped it up slightly, and that was enough for, for Paul to get his backhand topspin down the line. You can see it again there, just popped up. Bang, straight down. Against you and me, that's not popped up, that's low. But, okay, but if you if you pull Drinkle, that one popped up. And again, he's down the line this time again. It's another good tactic for any youngsters watching. Things How much these players go down the line as well as on the so diagonal it's a, into it's the It's a body. hallmark of the top 50 players in the world, isn't it? They can go just as effectively down the line and, and quite often down one line, get the ball come across the diagonal and then go down the other line. X's and H's and be the H's if you can do it. Paul keeping the pressure on. Again short to Liam's forehand. Again Liam goes short touch. Return to Paul's forehand. So they're both peppering each other's short forehands. These days I think players are more scared of a backhand flick than they are of a forehand flick on. Oh, and that was well done by Paul. He offered the topspin to, to Liam. Liam picked up the backhand topspin. But what a counter from Paul. Good setup. Very difficult to do. Very Paul, brave. Paul apologised there. I'm not sure why. Maybe he just didn't quite get the contact. He got a, a dodgy contact. A bit contact of a thick contact, maybe. Yeah. Ah. yeah, and that's where Liam gets the opponent away from the table and then goes wide into the backhand. Not necessarily the most powerful shot that you can do. But you can see here the second topspin. Make sure he gets that wide angle. Paul's going to win very few points from that position when he's away from the table. He's backing off again. There, the ball just caught the top of the net. Well, yeah, it's not, he's not going to win playing like that. If he can pick up 15, 20% of the points where he's genuinely stuck back there, but like you say, Don, if he starts to wander, and Paul has been known to do that occasionally, then I think Paul will be in danger. Give Liam time and he'll... Put, and Liam will not only get the right shots in, but he'll swing it either way. But I think Paul understands that very clearly. 
and he's doing everything he can to stay up, get him with that first top spin there. But, but now he sees a wait. Yeah. Even Liam. when he was aware that he tried to push back into the Liam. table. I think Liam's slowing down the top spin where every time he thinks that Paul thinks it's going to come hard. And that is getting poor. You can see him off balance there, and he's just struggling. And then it's a free shot for Liam straight through the crossover. Great tactics from these two men. So, moving towards the business end of the fourth game, seven points apiece. It is anybody's game at this stage. Pitchford with the serves. No, I think that's a side don. It's an interesting one. Liam said sorry. Was that an edge? Did it hit the top of the edge? Or... Oh, that might be an edge. Hard to say. I think he hit it from within the sideline, which could be crucial. And was that TTR, table tennis replay, that they're using there to judge? And they gave the point to Liam as an edge. It was close. And I, the, 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 the great thing there was nobody argued. Nobody, you know, OK, that was a tough call. It went against me. It went for me. And let's just get on with it. And there was no discussions, no arguments. And we're already eight all. And it's Paul now with his two serves. He needs at least one of these points because Liam will be serving at the end of the game. Short to the forehand, short return, yeah, cross court. Eight, so there's the pattern on Paul's service. So is Paul happy with the pattern or does he need to be the one to break the pattern? Will it be a short serve to the forehand? Will it be a short return across to Paul's forehand? Yes, pretty much. But Paul's in. 9 all. I thought that serve was, was going to drift long as well from Paul, but Liam took it over the table and Paul managed to get in with the first strong topspin, so nine points apiece. Do you think Do you think Liam could have waited for that in topspin? I thought so, yeah. yeah but then have... again, it's dead easy from sat up here in a box looking down. Yeah. And if you can't get a good one in, sometimes it's best to refuse it. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was mid-table, yeah, so I was. thought it was going long, but... Yeah. Maybe Liam missed an opportunity. I certainly wouldn't argue with these two playing at this level. Left. Nine, Nine points apiece. Paul will be disappointed with that because he kept the, ser the service return really nice and tight. Went for the long one, missed it. That was brave play from Brinkle there. Just caught the top of the net, flicked it off the end of the table. Game point to Pitchford. What are we going to see with the serve here? Might just give us a long one to break it up. Yes, he was fairly long. Got Paul away on the backhand again. Paul struggling. He's keeping struggling. him there into the crossover and the backhand. When will it go to Paul's oh. forehand? We won't know. Paul's on the floor. So, fourth game and a recovery from Liam Pitchford by the narrowest of margins in both of those games. But he squeezed it back to two all. And John, being pretty positive there with Liam, seems to know what he needs to do. Liam looking a bit more relaxed, listening, nodding. Looks like they, they both agree on a, the way it's going and the plan for the next game. Some fantastic rallies here, around the net, and then once Paul was away from the table, what could he do? This one went straight through the crossover. That was the one, Don, I think, that you thought he should have gone for. Liam, but in the end, Liam took it. Two games all. First of four wins. Will it be Liam Pitchford's sixth national men's title, or will it be Paul Drinkle's seventh? Paul obviously thinks he's got to do a few press-ups in between games. <laughs> so, momentum with Liam Pitchford. 2-0 down, 2 all. As we go to the fifth game. Mark Bates, Mark Bates our He's sponsor. Sponsor Thank looking you, Mark. This game. This so Liam serve. with the service. Again, the pattern is the service short, certainly a tight serve. And then getting in behind the serve, exactly what we saw there. Well, your small variations and the deception that goes with it, Don, there's a little bit of topspin on that serve. Paul touched it and it popped up in the air. That reverse action, we see the reverse action again and again. Liam's in behind the serve. And Paul, when he's away from the table, he's very spectacular. It's great entertainment. 
but from his point of view, he probably has a 20% success rate. And against Liam, it may be even less than that. Yeah, Paul swinging at both sides with the opponent away from the table. Both of those serves, Paul didn't quite read either of them. Left, love two. And there's the fast serve, and it works. Ace. <laughs> Well done, Paul. Chose the time to vary it. And it's worth giving that service. Maybe even if it's only one in ten, because you want your opponent just wondering when, he, when is it coming. If they know it's not coming, mm -hmm. they, they know it's going to be short. Yeah, and the second serve as well was a variation. A lot more side spin and went into the middle of the table. So Paul just thinking up a few new tricks and with some success. Three. Just caught Three. the top of the net, the return. But Paul was very positive there. It was only just over the baseline and he got in with a good top spin. The right tactic from Paul there. Liam got in with a, a deep top spin. And I think it was the depth there that caused Paul the problem. But nevertheless, he went for the strong backhand top spin, which is exactly what he should be doing. Pitchford 4 2. Trinkle with the serves. Wow. Is the momentum shifting now? The game of two halves. The first half dominated by Trinkle, 11 8, 11 7. And now we're into the second half, and it looks as though it's. Whoa! Oh, backhands from Paul Trinkle, like I've never seen him do. The first one was amazing to do it twice. Nothing that Liam could do about that, despite the fact that he had Liam away from the table. Look at the power in these backhands. One. And then the second one really surprised Liam. Beautiful play from Paul. Serve drifted long. Trinkle did well. He got him with the topspin into the Pitchford backhand. One point adrift now, Drinkle. He's 5-2 down. He's taken two big points. Four. Heavy backspin service from Pitchford, 4-6. Trinkle with his two serves to come. Has to stay in touch, needs one and preferably two from his point of view. But that was a good return of serve. Long fast push deep into the Drinkle backhand. Again, that positivity about his play. Pulls in, and that's a great shot, swinging it wide. Has a bit of a Pitchford swing with the with the side spin hook on the loop. Well done, Paul. Keeps him in the game. He's pretty much having to throw the kitchen sink in though, just to stay level. Still trails by two points. After having a two nil lead, it's been tough for Paul. He's doing everything he can now though to attack his way out of trouble. And what a great backhand down the line. Again, forehand down the line. Good length on the lob from Liam. He couldn't make the second one. Back and down the line there was definitely the decisive shot that set up the rally. Yeah, opened Liam up, Liam up didn't it? Nice flip from Paul. He's in trouble here. Can he retrieve? Not quite. Again, Paul frustrated that he's been forced away from the table. It's almost like, what am I doing back here? Especially as he was the one with the first strong attack. So hard for him. Needs two on his serves. Big two serves coming up. A nice little forehand block there from Liam from the crossover. Not a great shot, not a flashy shot, but just coping there with the onslaught from Paul and then drew the mistake in the end. So smart play there from Liam. It's not all about the big shots. Again, if I was Liam's coach in the corner, I'd be nodding my head. That was fine. That would have been a great return of service. Went for the backhand down the line, the good variation. What a beautiful backhand from Paul Drinkle. Again, though, the serve just drifted long. Pitchford immediately calls a timeout. Pivotal moment in this 
final 9-8 and of course if it goes to 9 all, if Trinkle can win the next point after the timeout, then he has the service at the business end of the fifth game and hit to state the obvious but this is a crucial crucial game to go 3-2 up massive so it's a one minute break each player can call it once during the match so this is the first time out. Interesting that Pitchford called it when he did. He just obviously wants a little bit of time just to reflect. He knows this is a massive point coming up. He's got the service. Just give him a little time to think about what serve he's going to do, what he's going to do behind the service. Nine, eight. Chat it through with his coach. He's done that, and here we go. Oh, that sounded something painful. Hurt. Something oh, no. hurt there. I think he kicked the base of the table there. The ball certainly popped up again. Paul didn't read the topspin on that serve. Popped it up, but Liam in extending himself. I wonder if he's hurt. No, I think he just kicked the undercarriage of the table. Obviously sounded potentially bad, but... Liam's absolutely fine. And now Paul, 9 all with his two serves to come. Can he take the two points with a serve? Oh, the long push from Trinkle. That was brave. <laughs> Liam did well there. He returned the serve. He cancelled out the advantage of the serve. And indeed, it was a long, fast push from Trinkle that gives him game point. Pivotal moment in this final. Oh, edge ball. Liam saved it by hitting the edge of the white line. The margins just a couple of millimetres either way. And that would have been 3-2 to Paul and put him in with a game of the championships. And the, just the top of the net again, a couple of millimetres, asking for a let's serve. No, no, he's asking for the ball. The ball? Yeah, the umpires now are throwing balls in and yeah. the ball boy is taking them away. Oh, I so see. He, he yeah. was just asking yeah, for a I ball. I thought he was asking for a let, but no, he's accepted that and wants to get on with it. Correct. Game point. Let to let Liam Pitchford. So, both players working to stay free mentally while it could be so tense. That's a beautiful flip from <laughs> Paul. He didn't expect the return and Liam takes it as a result. Paul did, really didn't expect that return to come back, Don. There was one backhand there, the one that Pitchford managed to return, and then the strong backhand tops that he did behind that shot was truly amazing. So it was a pivotal moment. It was a moment that eventually came down to a wonderful backhand from Liam Pitchford. And the edge ball at 11-10 on a game point kept him in it. And then he went on to win it. It was 10-9. He was 10-9 down Pitchford and he got a thick edge. And I think you mentioned, Colin, that is the difference between winning and losing millimetres. Well, you had a couple of millimetres with the edge, a couple of metres on, millimetres in the next rally where Paul hit the top of the net. And then a surprise return from Liam, which fantastic credit to Liam. He played a shot that, that uh, hadn't happened all through the game. And that was just enough to shock Paul. He wasn't expecting it, and that has given Liam the third game when Paul Drinkle was two millimetres away from taking it for himself. So Paul in a critical situation now after being 2-0 up, he's now 3-2 down. And for the second game in the row, he's on the floor at the end of the game. So the crowd enjoying it, applauding the players as they make their way back to the table. Paul Drinkle with the service at the start of the sixth game. He led by two games to nil. Pitchford now leads by three games to two. The difference has been marginal. Pitchford has won the last three games. Momentum clearly with him. But those three games were 11-9, 11-9 and 12-10. It doesn't cup tighter than that. 
Lucky net there for Paul. Keeps him in there. But I think Paul has a good hit rate done over, the, over his career of winning in the final game. 4-3, 3-2. So he won't be out of it. He'll know that if, if he can just stretch Liam to a, to a seventh game, he'll be confident to take it. If you're looking for a couple of tiny differences, Don, I'd just say Liam is just hitting Paul slightly better than the other way around at getting into the crossover. And the other one I think that is happening is that while we're looking at some of the big shots, I think Liam's block has just, just, just had the edge over Liam's fighting against a fast top spin. Certainly in the last three games. It's interesting, isn't it, to look for those marginal differences. Liam certainly played. It was almost as though when he went 2 0 down, he thought there's no point. I've got to relax. I've got to go for my shots. And I just thought he upped it slightly from where he was, only slightly. Indeed, I think that was the only way he could. He could was to relax and go for it. And not recklessly, but just to. Get rid of the bit, get rid of any tension because the tension will actually slow you down. The last three games, he's not played like a man who's under a bit of pressure because he's expected to win. No, that's Maybe right. Maybe in the first like... two games, he played a little bit like that, and it's only a one <laughs> half a percent difference in performance, which is minimal, absolutely minimal. But at this level, that difference can be crucial. Oh, Paul, that looked a tired shot. Oh. Time out coming from Paul, I'm sure. Yeah, there we go. Is he taking it? Mm. So 5-3 in favour of Liam, and that's... Paul knows that once he gets Liam away from the table, he should be winning 80-90% of the points and the other way around. And, of course, there Liam was away, tossed the ball back. Paul mistimed the forehand. So probably a good time to call the time out. 5-3 down having lost three consecutive games, albeit by the narrowest of margins. Yeah, unsurprisingly, Paul's uh, re-shoeing himself. I think it's the same pair of shoes, but he's sorting them out. You can imagine the strain that, uh, that the shoes are under and the insoles slipping as they change direction. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of effort, uh, sometimes around five times body weight, Don, going through the ankles. So the shoes have got to put up with a lot, so he's just uh, pitted. And uh, reworked his uh, reworked his undercarriage. Got the shoes sorted out. And now certainly you just get the feeling the momentum is with Liam. But just a couple of points done, it all changes over again. Two points against the serve. Game on. But it's Paul with the serve. So if he can take the two Three, points with his five. serve. It's all square at the halfway stage in the sixth game. Long way to go in this final. It's been a wonderful final so far. And I'm sure we're in for a great climax. But Liam just beginning to open up a gap here. Three points. Certainly Paul needs this point because, of course, he's got the pitch for two serves to come after this one. You see so the focus there for Liam on the return of serve, looking so intently for opportunity and to control Paul Drinkle. Not the easiest of things to do. 7 3 and serving, certainly a nicer place to be. But, but again, Liam has to keep the pressure on. He knows that if he just eases off a fraction, just tries to block a little bit, just return the ball, then. Paul will get back into this sixth game. Great return from Paul. A lifeline for Paul Drinkle. Kept the serve really tight, didn't he? Two points against the service now with his two serves to come. A four point lead now down to two points. Drinkle with his two serves to come. Good luck. 
Six times champion to serve. Oh, flicked just off the end of the table. Liam there, instead of going short across court, went half long to the crossover. You can just see Liam just getting into the zone. Paul looks a little bit tired or spent. No. Not surprisingly, it's been a big physical battle for both players. So 30 years of age, playing a very physical game still. Let's hope he can last a good few years yet, though. 9-5. Two serves to come from Liam Pickford. And that's the one. He's got him wide of the backhand again. Keeps him there. Five match points to Liam Pickford. John Davis thrilled. First one. First one, he says. Don't let Paul back in. And there it is, Liam Pitchford, six times national champion, wins against Paul Drinkle, six times national champion. But in 2020, it's the man from Chesterfield, sponsored by Victas, playing in Japan for, the, for his club. Liam Pitchford, top 20 in the world consistently in recent times, up as far as 12 in the world. He's beaten three uh, world number ones in the last couple of years. And Paul Drinkle still playing as well as ever in his life. And by the narrowest of margins, Liam came back from a 2-0 deficit. Did a fantastic job of just closing it down. But Paul Drinkle was an edge away from making that three games to, to Paul Drinkle. So the warrior, Paul Drinkle, unable to finish it off. But a fantastic match, nothing in it. They know each other so well. They train, they play, they work together. They're on training camps together. And in this one, they're fighting against each other for the glory and for the lifetime career glory. But now both men with six national men's singles championships to their name. Paul with more doubles, sink doubles, men's doubles and mixed doubles to his name. But Liam, a couple of years younger, four years younger, so Hopefully, both players, though, with many, many years of fabulous table tennis to come for themselves in England and also playing for England.